Hi, I'm Auntie Dawn. Welcome to my kitchen. Today, I'm making beef egg bowl. So many days I need a substantial meal in the morning to keep me going. The beef rice bowl has it all. Animal protein from the egg and the beef, fat from the avocado, whole grains from the brown rice, and plenty of flavor from the kimchi, sriracha, and furikake. Yeah, avocado, brown rice, furikake, sriracha, this may be the most California dish I've shown you yet. If you're making fresh rice, start your eggs cooking about five minutes before the rice is done. If you're using already cooked rice, microwave it hot while the egg is cooking. I use fridge cured beef for this recipe. Here's how I do that. So what I have here is a four pound chuck roast that has been rolled and tied. I'm gonna start by cutting the string. Makes me feel almost bad as decasing sausage does, given how, how much work I know it is casing sausage up, but it's got to happen. All right, so now I'm going to separate it out. Sometimes it's multiple pieces of meat that have been bound together, but it looks like this time it is just one. Okay, so now I'm going to take my salt and sprinkle it all over. This is a thicker piece of meat than the chicken that we did before, and so it's going to take more salt. Down in the description, I'll give you exact proportions uh, from the wonderful uh, cookbook charcuterie, but um, I usually just do it by eye. I don't think I've ever actually weighed my meat and then my salt to figure out the proportions. This is a, a very forgiving method. Okay, now I'm going to work the salt in, making sure I've gotten in, into all of the crevices. Now I'm going to wrap it up and stick it in the fridge. Now it's been a day since I put that chunk of chuck roast in the fridge and I'm ready to do the next step, which is to take it out and then I'm going to unwrap it. And you can see there's no visible salt left. It's all sunk into the flesh. So now I'm going to take my plate with a rack on it and transfer the beef to the rack. And now I'm going to find a place to put it in the fridge. Finding some place to put something this big in the fridge without it touching anything and there being plenty of air around it for cool, dry air to circulate is the most challenging bit. So I have prepared a place right here and I'm going to slide it in and you can see that it's not touching anything else. There's enough room for it to air cure. So here's my chunk of fridge cured chuck and it looks almost like jerky on the outside, like the whole thing is just going to be un unbelievably dry and tough. But in fact, it is going to be very nice once it's thin, sliced thin. I'm going to cut up about a third of a cup into small slices against the grain. If you really get going and end up cutting and cooking more, it's really nice for other recipes to so just throw it into a jar in the fridge and use it up. So you can see one of my slices here, it's quite thin and you can see it is against the grain. So that'll cook up nice and tender. I want to make sure to keep the slices all separate from each other. Uh, that's why I'm spreading them out on this plate so I can just dump them into the frying pan when it's hot without them sticking together. I'm going to cut any big pieces of fat, but the best parts of the chuck are where the fat is marbled into the meat. That is these little tiny ribbons of fat in the meat that on cooking will break down and make the whole thing very tender and flavorful. This is the same technique that I use for making broccoli beef or beef stir fry. Uh, so you will be seeing this again from me. And so you can see now that I've cut into it, you can see the inside of this chunk of beef is still 
quite moist. It does not dry out on the inside, just on the outside, which lets you get a really nice browning on it when you cook it. And it really concentrates the flavor. So I guess one caveat, I've only done this with um, grass-fed beef. Uh, if you're used to eating corn-fed beef, I'm not sure what this is going to taste like. I imagine it will be just fine because there's less flavor to concentrate. If you're not used to the more minerally, uh, some people say gamey flavor of grass-fed beef, uh, this may not taste good to you. Uh, in that case, I would suggest cooking up something else. All right, I'm going to put this on back on the rack on the plate and back into the fridge. Now I've opened a window. I'm going to turn on my fan and turn on the heat to medium under my frying pan. So while I wait for my cast iron to heat up, I'm going to put my uh, already cooked rice into a microwave safe bowl. I only made this a couple days ago, but you can see it is all already almost ready to make fried rice out of. So I'm going to add a good bit of water and then cover it with a wet plate while I microwave it. That really helps to rehydrate the grains so that they have a pleasant texture when it comes to eating. All right, my cast iron is almost hot enough to start cooking the beef, but also I need to get my kimchi prepped. I like a good bit of kimchi in my rice bowl. So I use chopsticks to pull it out. That way I don't need to worry about getting whatever's on my fingers into the kimchi. And I'm just going to cut it up so that I don't have big clumps of it. Just about like that. Okay, the lid on my cast iron has gotten to the point where I don't want to put my hand on it anymore. So that is likely hot enough. I'm going to add a little bit of cooking fat here. I'm using ghee. And yes, it is melting nice and immediately. That's just what I want to see. Okay, now I'm going to add my beef. All right, now it's started to brown, so I'm going to stir it up. Okay, now that nearly all the pink is gone, I'm going to scrape it all up to one side of the pan and add some low salt tamari. If you use the full salt stuff, it may well get a little too salty. So this is one time where the low salt stuff really comes into its own. Spread it out, get it a little more cooked to evaporate that up. And now I'm going to scrape it all to the side of the pan again, give it another dousing with soy sauce. Let that cook off. Now I'm going to remove it from the heat. Okay, now I'm going to start my egg. I'm going to turn on the heat under my egg pan to the low side of medium, get that going. I want to use a good bit of cooking fat here, more of the ghee. Uh, this is a nonstick pan, but I find nonstick pans work best when you don't ask so much of them, especially because eggs are so sticky. And also this is the fat that is going to mix into the rice. And one of the things about fat on a nonstick pan is that it tends to kind of puddle up and leave little holes like that. So what I try to do is get the fat distributed all over the pan in a single sheet, which is not does not like to do. Okay, and when I have it just covered up as much as possible, I'm gonna quickly add a sprinkle of salt and that helps hold it all in place. Now I'm going to crack my egg into the center of the pan Now I'm going to add another sprinkle of salt on top of it and then cover it up, turning it to low. All right, this is the time I'm going to microwave my rice. I give a small bowl of rice about a minute and a half uh, because it's already getting a little hard and stale and I've put a lot of water in, so I want that to have a chance to incorporate into the rice and then steam for a minute while the egg cooks. So while the egg cooks, I'm also going to prepare my avocado. This is half of an avocado that I cut up earlier. I put it in a vacuum sealed jar to keep it from getting brown. 
So I like to buy my avocados hard and green and let them ripen and then stick them in the fridge. But as you can see, this one, maybe I didn't do such a good job of picking it out because it is got a lot of brown in it. It was like this when I opened it earlier, but this dish does not need a hugeness of avocado in it so I can cut away the brown parts and still have enough. And I want to cut the avocado into small slices. So there we go. The rice is beeped done and you can see it's nice and steamy. So I'm going to let this stay covered over off to the side. And I can hear my egg frying a bit, so I'm going to check on it. Ah, the yolk is broken, alas. But you can see it is getting pretty solid. I'm going to baste the uncooked white with some of this ghee to help cook it. And turn it even lower and let it finish cooking. When it comes time to assemble, I'm going to want to have everything right at hand. Okay, let's say this egg is done, so I'm going to remove it to a plate. And then I'm going to dress my rice with the cooking fat. And a sprinkle of soy sauce. Stir that up. Now I'm going to add my egg. And I know it looks much more dramatic when you just put the egg on top, but that's hard to eat. I'm not into hard to eat food anymore. So I'm just going to cook it up, cut it up with these kitchen shears. Kitchen shears are the most amazing tools. I uh, tried a different, few different brands a few years ago, and what I discovered was I liked having multiple kitchen shears in the kitchen to use. So I'm up to three now. Uh, and I really recommend it. It's nice to just be able to throw a dirty pair in the dishwasher and pull out a clean pair. I'm going to sprinkle furikake. Furikake is a really wonderful flavoring. Sesame seed and seaweed, uh, but there's also a good bit of sugar on it. So if you're not doing the sugar thing, uh, you'll want to find a sugar-free version. I had to roll my own. Now I'm going to add the beef. And it doesn't take very much. You see, I've probably made more than I actually need for this dish here. So I'm going to set that aside and have it with another meal. We do not need very much animal protein to get through the day, even those of us who are omnivores. Add my avocado, kimchi. And now I'm going to add some dabs of sriracha around the outside where I can mix them in. And there's my finished egg bowl. This is a really flexible dish that welcomes leftovers. My partner likes his with a big spoonful of spicy chili crisp rather than the sriracha and kimchi. I hope you enjoy this egg bowl as much as I do. See you next time.